Hi Lorenzo. Hi. <laughs> It's so nice to have you here, a guest in my house. We haven't seen for, I don't know, three, four, five months or so. You have been in Brazil on sexability. Yeah. And you are ready to create sexability uh, or to host sexability in Engsbacker now in 2024. So uh, anything you would like to say about sexability, what's coming up and what was in Brazil and how do you feel of the next festival? Um, well, I, I think it's, it's nice to have this, um, both festivals and to see how they could enrich each other, you know, so I, I got more experience, I got more inspiration, I got more connection with people when I'm in Brazil and some of them will actually come to, to Sweden also and they come and And then we have this in Sweden and also my Brazilian team are in Sweden and they learn and they see and then we bring that from Sweden into Brazil. So it's really like uh, um, uh, beneficial for, for the both festival uh, in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. mm. So I've never been organizing a festival but I've been on so many festivals in the last <laughs> 10, 15 years. What's the biggest challenge for you as a festival director uh, doing this work? <laughs> for me, it's my, my, my personal uh, internal struggles of uh, feeling um, to, to trust uh, my gut feeling, to trust that it will, it will work and, and to... Um, go through my sometimes fears and resistance and self-judgment and these kind of things. That I think the, the, my internal process is, is, is the hardest one. And uh, uh, I've been doing this for 15 years, but it's, it's still uh, um, challenging to, mm. to do it. Mm. What I personally love the most about sexability is because I'm this consent geek yeah. <laughs> and uh, I love as well the fact that I'm coming again and again and introduced into consent. But I've heard you today uh, in, in our conversations saying one little quote um, about consent. What I really love about the festival because it makes it really safe. But sometimes if there is too much consent, does it kill the flow? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can you say a few words about that? Well, yeah, I think that when people um, her, uh, her, like uh, know about consent and think about consent, they think that it's something you need to check with the other person every time and like constantly and that kills the, the flow and the fun. It should just be there and see what happens and one thing is, you know, leads to something else and um, yeah but I've, as I see it um, it could actually be the opposite many times and um, when you feel that <clears throat> you have um, if you don't have consent if you don't like really have talked with someone about what your intention is you will have this like hidden agenda and it's like Uh, it's very common uh, that people, for instance, say, do you want to have a massage? Do you want to receive a massage? And when they actually mean, do you, I, I want to touch your body, that's what they actually want to do. And if that is the case, then have they start with a massage and they have like the hidden agenda um, of like, Can I touch the body in this way? Uh, is the person ready for the next step? And what happens if I'm touching in this way that they don't like? Or like if I'm going too fast or whatever. So you have this mind stuff going on. You have the fear going on. You have this hidden agenda that you are on a mission somehow which the other person will feel like you are in a mission to get something where you actually have said that you will give something, you are there to 
to, to, to get something from them. And you can feel that in the body. And so that creates a lot of fear and, and uh, dishonesty and not like, um, uh, yeah, you're not owning your desires and you are not transparent and you are very much up in your head. Uh, so, but with consent, when you ask like, hey, I really like your body, can I touch you in this way? And the person say like, yes, or yes, you can touch in this way, but not in this way. But you, you come to an unconsent part of it. Then you can just take all this mental stuff, all your hidden agenda, all your uh, dishonesty, all your like, <laughs> I don't know, like this, like patterns, destructive pattern. Yeah, you can just take all of this and just throw it out the window. Mm. And then you could instead dive into what actually happens in this present moment. You could actually allow yourself to feel and you can actually allow yourself to, to really enjoy the other person's body because they have said yes for, for you to do that. So you don't need to be sneaky about it or hide it. You can actually like, whoa, I really love this. And you could re dive into that experience. Mm. For me, that is getting into the flu. Mm. That is to embody it, that is to enjoy this, the moment and for me, that is way more sexier and way more juicy than just being up in your head and being scared. Mm. You know, I know that's probably your 18th festival that you are mm, organizing. Yeah, together so, with, with the, the Brazilian, <laughs> yes. Something like that. <laughs> and I have been, I think, on maybe eight or Something like that, or, or, or ten. I can't. Really I think <laughs> more. Yeah, but more. So, <laughs> and so flexibility is a one of, not even one is the um, festival that I love the most, mm. and because it's the safest festival I ever have been on all festivals, and it's the juiciest one at the same time, mm. and it's sex positive, it's uh, non-binary, it's it's open for all, and this is it's just fantastic. And uh, I've heard you saying today that you got an email from a woman, a uh, 30-year singer, and asking you, is it actually safe to come? And as we both know, as facilitator, safety is relative. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is, and I have seen it, that this festival is safe, but what is the structure that people who listen to that know what is happening in the festival that makes the festival safe? What is the frame, the container that people can come and there are 70%, I remember you saying, people coming new. What is it that makes it safe for 70% of new people who come to the festival? Yes, it has been the, the lately, the, the years that lately have been a lot of new people coming. Yes, uh, still there is people coming uh, back to the festival. Um, but... Yeah, what I would like to say to them is that I, I understand that people will hesitate to, to sign up or buy a ticket to, like you said, the Sex Positive Festival and um, maybe just like think of what could go on there. People will be like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Um, and I know that because I've been there also. I've been like when I doing my first like sex positive event or workshops, I was super scared. I was uh, um, super uh, feel uh, not safe and I, I feel like I was lacking uh, tools for communicating my, my limits and boundaries and how to ask for what I want and all these kind of things. And um, but that has also been a very good thing because I have that experience and over the year I'm trying to like picture like what would I like to, to be in, a, in a, this kind of event when I started like 20 years ago to go to this kind of event. Like what, what, 
what would that person need? And then I have like during the years, I'm trying to create that in different ways. So the consent part is a, a big part of that, the journey I have done with the consent work. Um, but also we have like, make sure we have the sharing groups, we have uh, workshop leaders that also understand the, how to facilitate and have the, the consent part. Um, and we have uh, emotional support team. This year we will have something that we will call the heart fluffers that will help you to connect with your heart and practice self-care. And, um, and we remind people of um, connecting with themselves, feeling to what they want, only ask for, and ask for what they want and only give what they are willing to give and remind them that we always can change their mind. Um, so trying to create, create like a, um, an atmosphere where you could um, feel safe, included, respected and empowered. And um, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm using my little scared <laughs> Lorenzo uh, uh, and connected with him and, and, and then see like how could I uh, create a way that this scared Lorenzo will feel more like safe mm. and so on and um, yes and I think the, the feedback I, I many times uh, get is that uh, people are surprised that this festival that they think maybe is like just like wild and crazy and, and sometimes, yes, we are wild and crazy, but it's also like kind of relaxed atmosphere and people um, feel surprised that they feel really relaxed and, and having a sense of uh, feeling safe. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I like that, you know, the sex positive thing. And this is my experience as well. That's very relaxed, specifically sex positive the elephant in the room is mentioned you know people yeah. know it's about sexuality and conscious sexuality mm. and and there is just like no pushing or no forcing and nobody's pressing anything on anybody what i really like another thing is that it happens in this beautiful place Engspaka. Mm. this is just like part of the eco village community around mm. the world so there are many people from all over the world coming in yeah. uh, even though sexability is a very yeah, intimate and small festival and uh, what I what I love so specially about that is it's not like there are thousands and thousands of people so the number of people is pretty um, you know overseeable and as far as I know there are about 20 spots left to fill so you're pretty nearly sold out I, so what's the situation who, who, who can jump in what's the what's the point <laughs> actually um right now we have a post uh, registration for uh, uh, single men uh, it's still open for couples women non-binary people like basically people that not um um identify themselves as, as a man like sing single man um but um, yeah, I, I think we have about um, like 30, 40 uh, tickets left, something like that. Um, and we might open the, the registration for men also when we feel like the, the gender balance is a little bit uh, more equal. Um, we, we welcome, you know, men, women, and non-binary people, and people that identify themselves as something else, or a mix of it, or whatever. But we also want to not like having like one um, group uh, being too dominant. So we're trying to, to have a good mix there. Mm. And um, yeah, but it's... Um, Still some tickets left, yeah. yes. This is what I love about sexuality, the conscious part of this is a certain amount of group and we don't go over. It's not like we just want to, it's, it's, it's not a ticket selling event on any cost. It's just like this is the amount of, of people that we want to have to make it kind of safe and in a, in a kind of functional container. Mm -hmm. And I love that, that this is really being held over all these years again and again. 
Yes, I think that we have grown. Like the, the first festival, I don't know, it was like 100 ish something, you know. And uh, last year uh, at site with all the volunteers and everybody, we were uh, like 570, I think, something like that. And maybe we have room for like 600 or something. But the, the important thing is that we are growing like a little bit at a time. So. Um, I think that maybe this size is a good number, uh, not getting like too much bigger than that. If that will happen, we need to make sure that the team and the workshop spaces and everything is working so we can like take care of the people that are coming. Uh, so that's in, in important thing but we sex people have grown a little bit like every year a little bit a little bit mm. yeah um so yeah mm. so, mm. so the nice thing is that it's um uh, a little bit for everybody to come to that festival you know as i said uh, uh there is um Uh, non-binary people, there are uh, uh, homosexual people, there are heterosexual people, there are maybe asexual people, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just like it's, actually it's, that too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit uh, 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 everything for everybody, you mm. know, it's just like I know that there is a um, the the evening the the uh, temple space we call it or the mm, yeah the, the playroom yeah the, the playroom and then there is uh, different cuddle spaces there is a place where people can have sex mm. uh, you know and 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 I, li I like the workshops and the workshop leader themes and this is just so versatile for so many different directions then what I really love about that is as well people can either Uh, stay on the camping site they can come with a camper van if they have they can stay on site in a dorm or in a room or off site they can rent their own house so this is amazing food is an amazing outside space so it's just it's just you know i'm i'm, I'm really <laughs> excited about that festival <laughs> and um so to bring that to a, a, a completion or to closer our little interview uh, is there anything that you would like to say final for people who are coming and people who plan to come and people who want to come? Um, yeah, I, I think that you pointing out that we are trying to, to make this, like, f like include a lot of people in this. Um, and the main thing is that even though we are connecting with other people and, and we're having these workshops and we're doing exercises and so on, it's, it's mainly like your individual journey. And you will um, learn how to uh, know yourself better and you will have a lot of tools that you can bring. So it will not just be um, a nice uh, experience during the festival, but something that you can bring from, from the festival into your life. Mm to um, have a, like create a better life that that's what I'm feel you know passionate about it's is the the teaching part of it and that is something you it's more like your individual journey and you could choose and you can design and which workshop you do and not being on a workshop but hanging out with people in the cafe or whatever um, uh, so you design your own little festival from this uh, Smurgos board, <laughs> Smurgos board, uh, and um, you can then, yeah, create your own festival experience in that sense. Um, so, yeah, it's it's for couples, singles and thrapples or whatever and different sexual orientation and so on i i think there will be um you could find things that, that you could learn about mm. yourself and other people yeah it's a, it's a little bit of everything as, as far as i remember it's always some bdsm is always some tantra is all yeah. some different sex positive or not sexual at all just about meditation or just like massages and touch that doesn't need to be sexual mm. i'm so excited about the festival it starts in august the 6th yeah it's six days 
Yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you're sitting on the fence and want to come get one of the remaining 30 tickets, um, I will be there facilitating about consent. Consent is sexy and the orgasmic blueprint. And I'm so excited to be there. And um, thanks for jumping into that interview and uh, talking to our guests. <laughs> See you there. See you there.